Today, folks, I'm giving you an in-depth look into my over $360,000 dividend stock portfolio. We're going to roll back a little bit. Listen to how Kevin O'Leary thinks about this market, because dare I say, we could potentially be in a bear market. Many people are now aware that over or almost 40% of the NASDAQ is down over 50%, meaning the top weighted companies are holding up the entire market. And those hedgies out there decide to start pulling back. We're going to start seeing major dips across the broader market. Markets. Now, I know the U.S. market is closed today, but the Canadian markets are gladly open and we are continuing to print all time highs out of a lot of Canadian stocks we're going to be talking about today as well. And we're also going to do something no other YouTuber dares to do, and that is show you the actual performance, discluding capital contributions to my investment accounts, because my God, it almost seems like I know what I'm doing when I'm talking about 400% returns in the last seven years. I'm outperforming Kathy Wood, dare I say, which is kind of staggering to me and not as a gloat or a brag, just in pure transparency, which is something if, if that's what you appreciate, not lying, not bullshitting, just the straight facts here, consider hitting that like button, folks, because first we got to hear what Kevin O'Leary thinks about the market, because so many of us are sitting here kind of shaking in our feet. And I'm, I'm, I'm definitely one of those people that are a little tremored by what's currently going on, because whether it's the NASDAQ or the Dow, I mean, the Dow is holding up better than the S&P somehow. But if you dig into the, the Dow don't, Jones Industrial guys, there are so many companies down 80 plus percent. And I know you know one, everybody knows a stock right now that is down 80 plus percent. But let's hear what Kevin O'Leary thinks about the broader market view. There's some big bets are being placed. What are you doing? So... 2021, the hallmark of that year was no volatility, even though it was horrific in terms of pandemic and other issues. But more normal markets are, are now here and we're going to get volatility. And I would say it's because the potential of a 20 plus percent gain isn't there this year. More likely 8% earnings growth, maybe 1% in dividends. So you're looking at a 9% year. Along the way, lots of volatility. And you've got, you know, that print, that 7% inflation print, um, you know, that nobody thinks that's sustainable, but it's still scary to see it. So that's going to put a bit of a spook on equities too, particularly in tech. And you're seeing that manifest itself in these flattish to down NASDAQ days. But the, the inherent growth in those companies is still there. Nothing's really changed. And so I think it'll sort itself out. But I'm looking for muted returns with a lot more increase in the VIX. And so we should get used to this. And, and, and we're, we're in a year where there's a midterm, so we're gonna have lots of politics. I, I, I love all the hearings to bash tech, and we're back doing that again. And that's gonna give you some volatility in the names. Nothing ever happens. It's just good sound bites for the politicians, but it still gives you volatility. So what I say, get over it and still allocate to equities because there's really nothing else to do if you wanna beat inflation. 7%. That's a that's, lot. So I want to reiterate that as well. That 7% inflation, too many people under understand how that affects their portfolio because in the realistic market right now, guys, if we continue at a 7% inflation rate, that means you have to make 7% on your equities, your stocks, your real estate before you even start making a return. And as an example, out of my portfolio where I yield like 2.5%, that means after my dividends, I still have to make another 4%, 4 percent 4.5%, guys, before I'm even making break even returns, which is kind of annoying, frustrating and largely underlooked. But I think you made some really good points in perspective here. And honestly, we have tech earnings coming up right now toward the end of the month. We have a lot of other earnings coming out. And on top of that, guys, what I keep telling you to pay attention to is that Fed meeting on the 25th and 26th, because that's the only thing that's going to throw a wrench and continue the volatility throughout the market. But again, volatility is good for us because that gives us buying opportunities for those of you looking to continue to cost average into your favorite companies or even the index funds, which honestly, if you're an index fund, Fund, you don't even know what the hell's happening here. But let's take a look at the markets right now, guys, first and foremost, before we look at my portfolio. And there's not much to look at because the US markets are closed. But if we scroll down, Take a look at these Canadian companies, guys. We are printing. What's keeping up my entire portfolio today are these Canadian stocks. Look, the Royal Bank today up 1.32%, another all-time high. Best purchase I ever made when someone said, why would you buy banks at all-time highs? Now, could that change? Could they revert? Absolutely. But the trend is your friend. And I'm going to continue to reiterate that, guys, that I really like these positions right now because they make up maybe about just over 15% of my portfolio, and they're definitely holding the weightings. And the only thing that I like to see coming back are these utilities today. we got Northland Power up 1.6%, Algonquin 
power up 1.2%, which also paid me a dividend yield. We're going to look at Talus looks like it's about to crack $30 for the first time. So thank you, Canada. Thank you, the Canadian Toronto Stock Exchange, because you are what is keeping my vibrancy alive. I mean, I got to love it, right? So let's take a look at the portfolio itself this week, guys, um, because I kind of finished updating it going into the weekend, didn't make a video about it. And just taking a look, uh, even with all the volatility in the market, guys, I'm, I'm still fairly happy with this, even though I think I'm largely exposed to tech, which I like for the long term. And I'm going to explain to you why you should still be very bullish on tech for the next five to 10 years. I just keep reiterating that today's overvalued tech market, you're kind of pricing in the next three years, which requires a lot of patience and understanding the idea of cost averaging in and knowing that you could potentially underperform the broader market for trying to get those outsized returns, right? But as I sit here, I am extremely exuberated to know that, you know, my goals from last year getting Facebook to over 8% weighting makes me very happy here. Uh, Tesla coming in the second weighted position, which by the way, I still absolutely love my Tesla position as much as people like to beat on it. I, I think people are going to be blown away by what Tesla's going to do before 2030. And I'm glad uh, that I have that kind of uh, exposure at a price that most people wish they could come close to. Because again, you know, in 2019, when I was like, hey guys, I'm buying Tesla stock, too many people didn't want to listen. And now they look at it and they still complain like, hur, 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 you Tesla's a stupid company, it's overvalued. It's like, yeah, it's up 2000% since I bought it. I don't know why you weren't listening before and you're going to keep bitching about it now when you should realize that it's probably one of the greatest uh, growth stocks you could buy. So the question is, now that you know it's one of the greatest growth stocks, what price are you willing to pay for it? Or, you know, avoid it, stick to your uh, your other companies. I mean, you know, people do what they're going to do, right? But take a look here, folks, uh, because as I mentioned, the Canadian banks are where my primary focus has been. And just take a look at this. Let's start with uh, BNS right here, up 5% fi uh, of the portfolio. We got CM at 5%, TD at 4%, and 2% at currently. Royal Bank, which I want to continue to add to, but combine those together, you're looking at about a 16, 17% weighting of right now my favorite aspect of my whole portfolio this year, because I still think in an interest raising environment, uh, the real estate that's still projected to be okay this year should bode very well for the banks. Uh, the only other thing that I'm still kind of intrigued about that I'm using ShakePay, which if you're Canadian, you can perpetuate free Bitcoin through a promotion where you log into the app, shake it every day, it exponentially gives you free Bitcoin, plus you deposit $100, you make 30 bucks, I make 30 bucks, that's how I'm cash flowing a yield right now without having to leverage that crypto like most people are. I'm going to project to make over $200 this year just in free Bitcoin, almost like a dividend. And currently that value is sitting at about 8,200, which I'm still trying to figure out if Bitcoin is something I want to allocate to in a volatile market because it's such an intriguing asset class. But overall, guys, that's kind of where the portfolio weighting sits at about 360 thousand dollars and what i want to tell you as well in this spreadsheet i just re-updated uh the chart master portfolios by adding this now this isn't an automated portfolio like our more complicated spreadsheets but because i'm constantly converting cad in us which everything you see here is converted to the canadian currency manually uh, it just gives me a better understanding of my my diversification so what i went ahead and did was i re-updated the way i'm tracking my dividend separating the canadian and us which by the way lots of payouts this month i mean we saw algonquin power payout recently, Rio can, Talus Communications already making, uh, what do we got here? $268 in Canadian dividends and another $108 in US dividends coming from Pepsi. Uh, and then on top of that, I also added an income and expense tracker that has a little nice charting for the, uh, the month over month, similar to the dividends, where I kind of just added what I'd be paying in my uh, corporate expense and my HST expense, which you can come in and re-edit this. But I added all of this, including my currently updated portfolio to the Chartmaster product list, which if you buy one, you get them all for free, including the automated one, the expense trackers, all this stuff. If it interests you, you want to support the channel, hey, use coupon code passive income investor, get 15% off. It's a $15 chart thing here. You're going to get tons to play with if you want, not that you have to, of course. But kind of bringing the conversation around, guys, to my current performance, I'm going to minimize my face here because I really want to show you guys this. I don't know how I've done this. It kind of blows my mind to be to be frank. This is absurd. I'm not trying to gloat this as a brag, but getting outsized returns over a seven year investment cycle, just under seven years. I don't think I'm there yet from September 2014 to December of 2021. Take a look at my different accounts here. The first account I ever started, guys, as I mentioned, I lost almost 50% of the value of my first bit of investments. And you can see I didn't even make a return until the beginning first quarter of 2016 when I broke even. Uh, so I mean, I was investing for just over a year before I started making any capital returns. It takes a little bit to understand this and figure out 
about the markets. And I know in a year where people are getting slaughtered on small caps and just, you know, considering the amount of stocks we played, leverage credit uh, last year, all that stuff, I have just excelled. I don't know how. Uh, I'm only <laughs> buying like what I believe to be the best balance sheet companies on the planet and clearly trying to focus on best balance sheet and best growth companies out, you know, trying not to diversify too much and not picking anything that I think is good and just really focusing has paid off exceptionally well. My managed account hit all time highs going into the end of the year, guys. I've almost had a 400% return in seven years. Dare I say that's probably outperforming Kathy Wood in my managed account. Uh, my RRSP, the black line here, guys, is up what, like 260% or something like that. And you can see where these lines start because I started these accounts at different periods in time. My RSP, I started in 2019 where I primarily started buying Tesla. And I'm just unbelievable how much growth I've gotten out of that account. My TFSA, uh, one of my largest accounts, guys, still outperforming the S&P 500 represented by this dotted line. And I mean, since I started my TFSA sometime in the midst of 2017, we are currently up almost, uh, I think, 100 in, uh, what is that, 190%. Um, just just in a little bit of a short period. I think we're outsizing the S&P by maybe 50 to 80%, something along those lines. I, guys, I, I don't know too many fund managers out there that have not only this kind of stability, but this kind of growth in their chart. If you can find one ETF out there that is even close to comparable to this growth, please send it to me because I would love to analyze it. And I, like I said, guys, not as a brag, not as a gloat, just being transparent here in my returns, which again, this is return returns before capital contributions, including dividends, just staggering. I want to just print this off and just kind of put it as a plaque on the wall, not to get too cocky, but just to remind myself how much my hard work and due diligence has paid off because I kind of argue with a lot of stupid people about stocks, but I have to kind of, you know, humble myself a little bit and understand that unlike a lot of people, I have time to sit here every single day and analyze the markets. Most people have a nine to five job. They're not putting the same amount of due diligence or time into what I'm doing. And again, I'm not telling to buy stocks, I'm buying either, by the way. I'm not a financial advisor. This is just purely for entertainment purposes, which leads me to my bull case still on the market. Many of you know, highly bearish on the market right now. I, I do not trust the current volatility of the market. Kevin O'Leary thinks we'll do fine this year. I beg to differ. We're going to have one of two outcomes, either what he said, which is kind of a flatline market, or we're going to be going down because hedgies are going to get worried. Inflation gets out of control. They're going to raise interest rates faster than anticipated. And that could really drive down a, a good one year, two year cycle in the market. I mean, Elon Musk has been hesitant on the market. I'm I, Like I said, this is the first year where I've been a little bit sketched out, again, not selling any of my stocks. But I want to remind you why I'm in the market with this photo right here, guys. This photo represents why I think that we're in the greatest growth cycle we're ever going to experience in the market. If you've been in the market for the last 10 years, you've experienced unbelievable outsized returns from the basic ind uh, indices. But take a look at this, guys. This is the year 1900, when there was one motor vehicle in the midst of horse and carriage. Skip to 1913, and this is the Easter parade uh, in New York City, by the way. Let me minimize my face here. Year 1913, so 13 years later, there is literally one horse in carriage because I keep trying to tell people how fast things will change. And sometimes they forget how fast things get implemented into the market, whether we're talking about the iPhone kind of just revolutionizing the way we, we operate our daily lives. The iPhone only came out in what, 2007, 2008. So it's just been over 10 years similar to this. And every single person is basically using an iPhone. They own over 50% of the market share. And I, this is what I kind of constantly got to remind myself for the next decade of, am I in the right companies to take on this kind of growth and innovation? And I truly believe I am, right? So this is what I want you to constantly remind yourself of is this this is like going back to the 1800s when the first printing press came out to the first steam engine. The periods at which innovation was happening back then was staggered to telecom, internet, all that stuff was staggered, but now it's compounding at an exponential rate of growth leading to these insane revenue numbers, these insane EPS bottom lines and these top tech companies that I think are going to continue to excel in these markets. So at this point, folks, I just want to pass the question off to you. What are you buying? How do you feel about the current market situation? I mean, for me personally, if you want to learn more about my buys and sells, guys, well, just consider subscribing for those future updates because by all means, I'm never done cost averaging into the market. However, in this volatility, I'm a little more cash focused, just to build up an emergency fund, paying attention to where the dips are that I want to buy. And heck, I'm still overpaying for banks got some dividends coming in trying to figure out where those are going to get invested a lot of fun stuff to look forward to so stay cool stay awesome and i look forward to catching you in the next one